eyebrows, you gotta do that. The highlight, the orange makeup, you gotta do that. You know, there's certain little things without going over the top. And my first few years there, I used to push that envelope a little too much and, huh. and go, oh, I can make a chin and make a cheek. And I've learned what I can and can't get away with on, a, on any given basis. How does it feel when something people pick up on the Melissa McCarthy thing, or any time something like that happens to where now it's a running joke everywhere that they'll refer to Sean Spicer as Melissa McCarthy yeah, yeah, yeah. every time. Yeah. And, it, and how does it feel when your work's picked up on so universally? Like it's that? really pretty awesome. I mean, I, it's just that this season has been such an amazing year for the SNL. It's just people like... They watch the, they watch SNL to see what we're gonna make fun of with the news and it's it's great when they you look in, in your mind when you hear Sean Spicer you see Melissa McCarthy's face now you know what I mean so many people are like oh is, is that Sean Spicer or is that Melissa McCarthy but it's it's just an awesome feeling like, to see your work recognized so broadly and it's it's in this time in this day and it, it really has helped to be able to have a little fun. So, <laughs> you know, have fun with it. Yeah, and yeah, no, well, that's the whole that's the whole they won't let you they everything that anything that we do they're totally so far against that we push more more for it. Like having Spicer driving around the city on a little podium was just <laughs> how does it feel to know where Donald Trump is angry at you? Yeah, well, <laughs> Yeah, I when it was so funny, like when when uh, when Trump was elected, I had friends in London go you know you go to jail, right? <laughs> <laughs> so as a makeup artist, falling off mustaches is a big bugaboo. In your show, it's even a bigger bugaboo. I, I know I remember there was one skit earlier this season, uh, like an outdoors historical skit. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was, so, what's his name? Uh, Harry Styles. Harry yeah. Styles. What do, you, what do you do to try so, to prevent that? Well, with, with him, the problem was he didn't want to put glue on his face and you know, minimize the glue usage. And, you know, usually it's it's hard to do on a live show. Like we have a mustache pop, a beard pops here and there. It's live. You know, it's live TV. You can't get away with having everything perfect. We just I use a, a lot of the glue, the glue we use is Telsis matte lace adhesive, which is it's great because it's quick, it's strong. Huh? Zinc. Well, yeah, zinc. But that's only for the prose. But I know. <laughs> but for like the facial hair, we use a lot of matte lace adhesive, the Telsus matte lace adhesive. With him, we couldn't use a lot of glue because he was a makeup artist, he was mm -hmm. flipping out. And, uh, Do you ever lay down a prep on the skin first before you? We just keel, uh, clean it with Kiehl's astringent, mm -hmm. and then uh, little Kiehl's astringent, and then just shitload of matte oh, that's matte kind of lace. What are some? There's tricks? not much. There's not much time too. Sometimes like, like Amy has. For example, this week she had a bunch of mustaches on the rock, and he's got a commercial break to get his. Get a mustache glued on, a wig glued on, get all that clothes dressed up, and he's sweating from the last sketch. There's a medical There's a medical product called Skin Prep from Smith & Welcome. Have you ever tried using that? On, on yeah, the but the thing is that leaves a film on the skin. Uh -huh. we, can't, we don't have time to get that off on the uh -huh. next sketch, so we also got to be able to put because he may not have a mustache in the next sketch. So we've got to be able to put something on that goes on, but then in the next sketch, you're not going, what the hell is that over here? Yeah. Especially and with the HD, the light will catch the, any residual glue. We've got to... powder on top of it, you've created a problem. If you leave it, you have a problem. We've got to consider the next sketch. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
if you can't get, we could really glue down the front with whatever really strong glue, but if I can't get it off for the next sketch, it defeats the purpose because it looks great in one sketch, horrible in the next. So you can't go, you gotta find that happy medium of, all right, it's end. Luckily, most of our stuff has to stay on for five, 10 minutes tops. It's not like it's gonna stay on for a whole day of shooting. So you glue it on, you'll get 10 minutes out of it, and you rip it off and you're good to go. That's one of our saving graces. 15 minute time frame. <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Whose idea was it um, to cast Alec Baldwin as Trump when you finally took that role? Because I know you went through a few Trumps. Um, but that was actually Tina. Yeah. Tina Fey was mentioned it to, to Lauren that like, uh, she was like, oh, why don't we have uh, Alec play, uh, play Trump? And, and Lauren's like, oh, no, let's go see. And Alec, and so Lauren went to Alec, and Alec and he's like, you want to play Trump? And he's like, I don't want to do that. I'm, like, yeah, I'm going to start doing it. He was getting ready to do this movie. He was, was going to be gone. And then all of a sudden, the movie fell through, and he's like, I'm Trump. <laughs> 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 and so he showed, he came in, and we had the same kind of design meeting. We, uh, Me, Jody, Steve Higgins, uh, and Alec, we sat down, and we would just started talking about, well, what do you want to do to make you into Trump? And his thing was, I wanted to, he wanted to be bright, 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 bright orange. And he had all these great, great ideas. And we had to take what he had in mind and play with what I know Lauren's going to want to see. And we kind of put it all together and made uh, somewhat of a pretty uh, fun, iconic character of Alec Baldwin as Trump, which, is, which was a fun one to, to create. And hopefully that's a little bit of jail. <laughs> If he, had, if he had his way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the show went from being, when he hosted the show, it was great. Now it's the most unfunny show there is. So. Oh, most unfunny. Yeah. There's just no talent. No yeah, no talent at all. A total hit show. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite What's your favorite project you worked on for this? For Saturday Night Live. Oh. Like, what was your favorite build? This, this season has been a lot of things that we've had. One of, the, one of the fun ones was when uh, Peter Dinklage hosted. We got to build a full-size dragon head. And that was last season. Last season. Last season, Peter Dinklage hosted. We had a build. We did a sketch. It was uh, it was like a Game of Thrones sketch, a pre-tape on Friday. So Thursday morning, we find out, okay, we're doing this Game of Thrones thing, and Bobby's going to be play the guy that's going to be the uh, he's going to be the one that's going to play the dragon for Peter Dinklage to react to. But they want like a big dragon head on top of his head. And, they wanted to look like one of the particular dragons, so we're like, okay, well, when do we, when we need to have that ready? I'm like, oh, we're gonna start shooting it Friday morning. This is now Thursday morning, so <laughs> we've got a sculpt, a full, like a, it was like this big, a big dragon head. So we sculpted it, Jason and I sculpted it, then we gotta mold it, so the three of us slap silicone on the mold, make a big, giant silicone mold, make a huge, multi-piece plaster, uh, plaster bandage mother mold Fill that sucker, pour it up, paint it, and have it on set by yeah, like. We made two of them because they, case, they were dropping it from a from they you know they were dry. He would they, we had they had it strapped to a dummy that they were going to drop 15 feet. So just so that there was a backup, we ended up making two of them. So within 24 hours, we ended up pulling out two full size. Paint was still drying. Yeah, chasing to the the, 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 the eyes were still drying. It was yeah. to go to set. There's a lot of really We hope it dries by the time it gets there. But that was one fun one. Uh, yeah. Then we also get to do stuff and it never gets seen. Like we built a full, when Chappelle hosted, we built this alien suit, like from the waist up, full brand new head sculpture. With, that was cool. That was, it got cut between dress and air so nobody wanted to see it. And it just, now it sits in our shop. But a lot of times cool. they'll, yeah. chop candy. Yeah, <laughs> well, and we'll get stuff that will say we want this and that. And we're like, you know, we're just gonna build it. So. Even if it gets cut, that's a cool feature. It was feature. so cool, yeah. It was cool and fun to build, and we got this cool thing now sitting in the shop. But <laughs> That's what you were showing Rick last night. Yeah. Right? The, 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 oh, the white with the... Uh, the, the white creature. With, yeah, no, nothing, with, nothing's, more stre no, nothing's more stressful than Rick Baker came by last night to, to <laughs> see the show. So we're doing a ball cap, and Rick is standing there watching. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was impressed. Yeah. <laughs> Seven minutes, he was impressed. So no, nothing, nothing's more stressful than having your thing to watch it. I imagine. Yeah. While you're doing yeah. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like one of those you, you can't have any idea until Rick Baker's standing there yeah. and you're doing it. Uh, what what was what was your I would I guess most stressful or least favorite? 
least, least favorite villain. Who was his least favorite? Least favorite. Least favorite to the ones that come through. Are you talking tenure? Or are you talking uh, yeah. uh, Out of all the years. Least favorite. Or, or I, in, maybe, maybe it doesn't have to block, be absolute. It can yeah, be right. in the I top three. them out of my head. Um, it's got to be something that you weren't secure with knowing your ability to do. No, I mean, there's be been a couple of things that, like, well, one of the things I really wasn't happy with was well, there was a years ago, uh, this was a long time ago now, where uh, Fred Armisen had to play Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> and uh, we built a nose and a chin, and, and we did the two. We actually had time, we had a day the day before, it was a pre tape, so we had a little time to do a test makeup on him. And I was like, I put the makeup on, and I'm like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> like, this is not <laughs> So I was like, all right, let me take the chin off. I was like, all right, I think I can just get away with the nose and just painted some highlighting shadows on the chin. I was like, all right, it's it is what it is, but it's not my my shining moment in the sun, but it'll it'll pass for what needs to be passed. And, and once you started talking, it, it worked. But there's there's been that time where like whatever you built, it just you look at it, you glue it all down, and you're like, it's it's just not. Good. It seemed like but, a good idea. At it the seemed time. like a good idea, but then. The upside is like you'll do it for dress rehearsal, and you're like, all right, and it kind of sucks. And then you've got three hours to rethink what you did and maybe change it up a little bit. And like uh, an example would be first time we did uh, Connor, well, no, Ka, Michael Che is Lester Holt. Yeah. The first time we did it, I was like, ah, you know, it worked, but it wasn't. I wasn't 100 percent happy with it. So he did it again just recently. So I resculpted the nose, painted it a little differently, and I was a lot happier with it the second time. First time I was like, yeah. you know, some people's faces take to prosthetics. Some people just it doesn't go as well, and you got to work a lot harder. His was just the first time I was just not happy. The second time I was happy. Because what was so that? We did the Bobby's mask. Oh my God! Well, in that between, was in between shows because it was covering too much of his face. Yeah, that was the fun one. Pulled back. So we did a we did a Bobby Moynihan had to be the mask. You know, for Jim Carrey's the mask. Mm -hmm. I, we built a big mask head, and it had a forehead and a chin thing. And we did it for the uh, for the dress rehearsal, and then uh, Lauren's like, "Oh, it covers too much of his face." This is where I, I ran that line. And I'm like, oh, it's gonna cover a little more. He's gonna be green, and so it covers too much of his face. Can we get rid of this? And can we get rid, make it smaller? So between dress and air, that's a weird line to walk with the mask. It's like it's gonna <laughs> cover <laughs> his, it's a, the mask. Yeah, exactly. So I figured I can get away with it on this one, but. No, they shot me down, so I had to go back in, and we went back, and we took that, took that, just do an mold, edge? just did a quick sculpt of an edge, made a quick appliance, we slapped the mold together, ran a set of pieces, and had it for the air show to make it a little smaller and glue it down. And it's, how much time is there between it? And that was in like a day and a half. Oh, to glue, and we put the makeup on. Right? I, well, I think yeah. there are a number of people in this room, including me that would love to work and do exactly what you're doing. So I want to hear from um, everyone, like how you came to have this amazing gig. Like this, this is this is the living the dream for, I'm sure yeah. for you, but for all of us. Yeah, so like I, like how, I, how, did, how did you? Well, we actually it? knew each other, we but we knew, never, we yeah. lived in Flushing, Queens. We all we knew each other, but we never worked together at all. Fuck Queens, man. I'm from Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I live in Queens. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> but anyway, so but you know, it's like there was a few of us that did makeup, and we all kind of knew each other or heard about each other or something. Like Bottom line until, is, like, you got a uh, want. What's that? You got a want. What? You got a want. You, you got to want to do the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the one line. thing. It, 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 what the point is that, that Tom is trying to make is like because you have so little time to do all these kind of things that you're gonna have to you, you're gonna wanna have to really do this kind of stuff. So for me, it's like I remember when I went in for the interview, I got out the, I got out of the train. And my wife calls me up and says, "Oh, Louis's not gonna make it. He's not gonna be there." And I was like, "Oh." And I'm standing on a corner, it's like 48th Street, and I'm just sitting on the ground going, I have my book with me, and I'm like this, and who, who, five minutes later, walks around the corner but him. <laughs> and he goes, oh, come on up, uh, you were doing the play. Did you yeah. doing Spider-Man or one of those plays? Uh, no, this was before Spider-Man. What was this? Yeah. It might have been the... Uh, first interview. It might have been the, 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 the vampire thing. 
Oh, the list that day? No, the full list that day. How far back are we going? Yeah, this, this, is is a a this is like, oh, this is like 14 years yeah, ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Dude, I was on Double Dance of the Vampire. Dance of the Vampire, thank you. Dance of the Vampire. Is that Josh? Josh, yeah. sorry, everybody. What the hell that was glitter? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, uh, but we, we'd actually met at an Alcone, we, you know, we knew each other, and we met at an Alcone party. Yeah. And he said, um, and he says, oh, you know, he's looking, and, and I was just a swing. So I think in two years, I did three shows. But then we, then, then, he, then he said, I did whatever it was, bring your book. I hit, and, and when I had the interview, I walked out going, oh, <laughs> I didn't get it, I didn't get it. It was like a week later, he goes, hey, you want to come? <laughs> when someone asks you, <laughs> you want to do the show, you say yes. That's the funny thing is, the second season, he calls me up. He goes, hey, you want to come back? <laughs> Asking me if I want to come back. I was like, what? Oh, no, no that's like, a terrible I, idea. I do that to every, I, like, I never take anything for I'm like, I always ask him, you know, I'm, I'm back. Would you like to, I'd, I'd love to have you come back. I always ask him. I don't assume anything. You never, I don't even assume that I'll be back next year until yeah. he asks me to come back. And I think you learned it just... After how many seasons, you never time. assume that I'll be back? I never assume that I'll be back. I always wait for them to say... That's a modest man. It's, it's, like the, it's like the Friday before the show was going to start. I don't know if I liked it this year. And he had called me. And I'm like, am I coming back? I heard nothing. And I call him up. He goes, really, am I starting the show tomorrow? He goes, yeah. He's mad. I was like, he didn't call me or anything. I had no idea. I was like, you didn't know? I was like, no. I thought I'd just skip naked pictures of all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> How how did you come to the show? Uh, I used to work. Uh, I got lucky. I was really lucky. I I used to work at uh, for Vincent Westney on uh, New Jersey for years. I mean, I always wanted to send in a resume to NBC, but I never thought I was ready. So now I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. So finally, well, man, that was many years ago. I sent <laughs> I sent a resume into uh, NBC to the to the studio department there, and then I would call. There was a lady there by the name of. Her name was Lillian Hickson. She was the studio manager. No, she was the secretary for the studio manager. And I would call her once a month and go, Hi, Lillian. It's Louisa Carey, and I sent you a resume and a package, you know, a couple of months ago. Do you have anything, any days, or any availability for me? She would go, No, we don't have anything right now. Thank you very much. And, you know, try again. So every month or two, I would give her a call and say, Hi, it's Louisa Carey again. How are you? You know, can I? After about a year of, of calling her constantly, she finally she's like, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna set you up in an interview with George Mendes, who's the studio manager, and you can talk to him, show him your resume, and you know, see what he can do." So I went in, I went into my interview, I had my portfolio, sat down with George. He's looking at my book, and first thing he says is, "So are you uh, are you in the union? You know, it's a union shop. Are you in the union?" I was like, That's really good. Well, and I told him I was like very drunk. I was like, "Listen, I, I can't get into the union until I work in a union shop." I can't work at a union shop until I get into the union, so I'm kind of screwed. I can't, I have no, I'm, I'm trying to get in, but I can't get in. And he basically said, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna let you get the days, I'm gonna get, like, start hiring you and let you get the days so you can get your union card. And he, they would hire me to go in and do disguises on the Phil Donahue show. <laughs> so I would go in, there would be somebody that they wanted to recognize, so I'd go put beards and mustaches and, and noses and shins on these people on the Phil Donahue show for like two years. And then I got a call to come in one day and just work. It was I got a call. Jack Engel was the department head at the time, and he had called me to just. And Kelly Gleason was there, working in the shop, and he called me to come in and just do a day in the shop. And we went and built these exploding heads for for this for this one episode. And it was, it was like, oh my God, I'm working on SNL, and like I got to work in the shop at NBC. And, and then he asked me to work on the show that one Saturday night. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to work on SNL. I get to. I skipped all the way to thirty to, to Penn Station. Like, Every homeless guy was like, "Here's a buck, here's a dollar, here's a dollar, here's a dollar." Here's a dollar. <laughs> it was like the, the I was I could I was on cloud nine, you know. And uh, the following year, the he left and they brought in Mike Daddy, who was the department head that year. And I came in as his as his second, and I did that for two years, and then he left, and then I took over as the department head, and I've been there ever since. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, Will. It's been, it's been a fun. No. How, how did you come to the show? Uh, I got really lucky, I suppose. What it's worth, I started with a job here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, sorry, Mark. <laughs> I, 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 
wait, I want that on video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have that apology immediately. <laughs> you got to take into account that a lot of the pioneering techniques over the past 20 years at SNL in the makeup department has come from Louis Aaron. And I have to attribute a lot of my career and what I've gone on to do, I worked on Ghostbusters and Americans, and a lot of other film and television, I've learned from Lou. And, and since I've known Louie and his tenacity and, and his work ethic has taught me a lot. And it's, that's why he's the longest running department head at SNL in 42 seasons. <laughs> Where's the envelope with the dirty pictures? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gotta be blackmail or something. Yeah. That's like the temp, most tempered iron from the fire. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, like man. Man. Yeah, it's because I mean that it's it that's not the pan, that's the fire. <laughs> you know? It really is. J Jason almost didn't like oh, man. Jason's a great one too, because I had gotten back surgery five years ago, so my back was all I was laid up in a hospital. I was, he was really high. I was really me. high on a lot of <laughs> so, Sounds awesome. And I was just looking, I was tooling around on the internet. I was like, looking for makeup effects people in New York. And I ran across Jason. So Park. you found him? Yeah. When you were high? I found him. I was like, oh, he had to Just get stoned and start firing. So, uh, start not firing. So I'm, I'm, I'm people. laid up in bed. And I'm like, <laughs> high on all kinds of drugs. And I'm, I'm like, I was like, oh, let me can just send this guy just, you know, a. Uh, Call in an email to come in for an interview in the coming next month. You know when I get back on my feet, and uh, and he, he almost didn't answer because he thought I was it was I somebody's. Was, I didn't think anybody still had an AOL. I, I still had an AOL. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, you like, fucking with me already. <laughs> but I responded to it and came in for an interview. And so the, the the best part was I'm sitting there like I just sent him an email like two days ago and I'm laying in bed and I'm like ah oh, face off. So let me watch this shit. I'm like I'll watch face off. All of a sudden, I'm watching the opening, I'm like, is that the kid that I just called? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, he was on Facebook. <laughs> but it's, but it's been, it's been won't interesting. hold it against you? I won't, I won't hold it against him. <laughs> I don't let Face Off fool you. He's the only one. <laughs> face Off. <laughs> so how did you feel? Uh, so I worked, in a lab. Josh. I worked in a lab with him years earlier, and I think he started at SNL. He's not there anymore, but he started the year before me, I think. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Josh. You know the work for Marvel. Josh story. <laughs> Josh was a good story, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to hear that one. But, but yeah, I had a couple of good stories. I got called. I had always wanted to work there, but I just had this feeling if I ever. And liked I think we it. met on a shoot. We were doing a shoot at. Uh, you were working at MTV or with MTV, and we did a shoot, and I had met you briefly. Yeah, you remember it. I yeah. don't. I met you somewhere at, at one of these shows. It was we Tuesday all, for you, but for him. We all do yeah. like 400 jobs. I mean, even still, we're all like bouncing around the Yeah, I mean, place. we all help each other and do our own things, and mm -hmm. we don't stop. I don't think we really sleep. No, no we anyways. don't sleep much. Um, but yeah, I, I, I knew Josh had started working there, and again, I'd worked with Josh and left for years. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there was a big snowstorm. Mm -hmm. so somebody didn't come in and I think my first night they just threw me with Chris Kattan yeah. <laughs> and, and for me it was memorable because obviously I was there the space if, it's really hard to tell when you see it live uh, on TV but the space is very awkward the most unusual studio ever and so it's just a process like when you're just like thrown it, it was I mean very trusting of you <laughs> he, he sort of just threw me in the mix and like trial know. by fire. Well, that's one of the big things. Is it's it's, it's got to be a, it's sink or swim. There's people that can handle it, and some people that can't. And, well, so know. I was with Chris Kattan, and he's the little he was you know a firecracker. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, and um, but that night, but I learned a really big lesson with like timing and space and teamwork. Is the person he, the hair person? I, th I don't think ever came back another season after that. But yeah. there was a, not because of this incident, but. <laughs> so I was put with a dresser, a hair person, and because every cast member has their own hair, makeup, and wardrobe person, and you're kind of a little team, and you figure out how to do these changes together. 
except for when you do the pit crew and except yeah. two when it's, when, yeah, when, it, when, it's <laughs> when the pit crew attacks, it's just, you just and the actor's got to just sit there. All right, I'm good. Like even Beck, who's yeah. beating his head so much. <laughs> but the, that was cool. the hair person, Chris had quick change. And she got her they use spirit gum. We don't. Mm. We use calluses. And anyway, she had mm -hmm. her. I thought you were talking about dripping later, like no, like she a spilled not, bottle. That's the thing I think a lot of people forget is well, we're all moving and doing stuff. Like we have things that could damage, whether it's the pack, whether it's freeze paint. Like you we have to be super wardrobe, mindful yeah. of wardrobe and everybody else's space and what their work is. So like we can't be messy and mess up think, somebody else's job. You got to think about everybody's job. You got the hair department, the wardrobe yeah, we department. Can't you can't just go. Oh, I'm just going to worry about my stuff and not worry about. Yeah, else. it's really there's like actually order and within the chaos of like how things happen. So you're, I'm sure you're constantly giving each other, each department's giving each other heads up. Watch this, it stains or whatever. Yeah, we, yeah, we always, we, yeah. everybody's in well communication with each other. Yeah. It's like, what blood or yeah. What, or, but yeah, anyway, this woman spilled her adhesive everywhere and that was my first night there and I thought, that wasn't me. And... <laughs> I feel like I'd have everything in a dropper bottle. Like I'd be so afraid to spill anything. But then you also gotta yeah, be careful. Yeah, but you can't get it out fast enough. Yeah. You can't do your crib chain, so you gotta. It's that, it's that tight rope of what can you get away with. It's got a brush top. Yeah, uh, a brush it's, lid. It's a, it's a very. It's a precarious what you mentioned is not a lot of, as you were saying before, how this very odd studio is set up. There's like no real makeup station or changing yeah. stations. You're changing. They're basically like canvas all. If you've ever watched 30 Rock, can you see those hallways they walk down? That's where we're doing our changes. There's pipes and there's cable and there's scaffolding and you found a little two inch little section to put your glue bottle. <laughs> I literally do like a mental map with the host like last night and because I, I had, I was wearing pink heels because the rock was so tall and I, an apple, and I was on Everybody's apple. Everybody's so tall for you, lady. I know, but then I was on an apple box as well and we, we were doing a change in a space that's no bigger because she puts out a towel, so the towel becomes our, and we were behind the stage, and there, it was black, and I remember I had to take off the mustache, clean him up, get him back, and a sketch that didn't make it to the air show was he had a, a silicone mask that he had made for his face that was glued like a, that oh, no, it's a little silicone mask, and, and that was a really quick change. But that was like a fast, yeah. well, also to get him into that scorpion costume, that's not easy, so he's bending over, I can't. That's the thing. You but there's nowhere to the there's nowhere to put your items. So So if you guys rigged like special body gear, like a, a bottle tray to put on the chest and just go like this. You're moving to get your stuff done. So if you, you got something I got got your, that. it spills everywhere, you put it on your wrist <laughs> and <laughs> turn it out. I don't I just find little It's edges. just finding little spots where you can place your okay, that's a little corner that's safe and you have to think ahead and think like who's not gonna knock into something like a lot of times I'll and also Spirit gum for yeah. somebody who's blue. You help each other out. And his My magnetic telesis, isn't it? Yeah, no. <laughs> that's, that's not a bad that's idea, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put a magnet in the bottle that's also an agitator. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How did you uh, get tied into um, I'm sorry. SNL? I'll hear hey. your story, yeah. Yeah. We met on, yeah. on Dogma. Dogma. We started Johnny A's. Yeah, we were, we were right. looking at a, a, Thanks a for Vincent Guastini in Jersey on Dogma. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Louie and I, we did the armor. Oh, yeah. For, the, for uh, the Angels. The Angels together. armor. Together. And, yeah. and then I, just, told the, I know after this, that was up, I was like, hey, Tom, you want to come work on SNL? I had no fucking idea. He was like, SNL? What's that? <laughs> Saturday Night Live? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> we had a dogma, and uh, you know what? I, I owe a lot to my career to Louie. Uh, he's, he's a very benevolent guy when it comes to the industry and his knowledge and bringing up people and supporting people and 
posturing and helping other uh, uh, careers. Dick Smith said it, and he lived that. Yeah, well, I, it's, it's Dick Smith's laugh, and I just want to, I just try and keep his spirit alive in that place. I just try Don't be a dick. <laughs> Help him. <laughs> that's the bottom line. Yeah, that's my buddy. <laughs> Can you tell us Josh's story now? Oh, yeah, Josh. Yeah. So, so there was a... <laughs> oh, wait, 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 Josh, 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 come over here. I got to pee. So come on. I see. What happened? How'd you oh, join Josh, SNL? Come on. Josh, Josh story. Oh, what did I do? Yeah, you got to sit down. Yeah, How'd you come aboard? How'd you join SNL? Sit down. Sit down. I got to pee. Yo, we all heard that. Yeah. So a lot of my crew left. Josh was the only one that was still with us. So I, I called up Alco and I was like, who do you know in the, in, in the industry that's, that I can interview? And I thought, oh, call baby Josh, this guy, Josh Stewart. I said, yeah, so I called Josh in for an interview, met with him in an interview, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I look at his book, and he's like, well, you can work. I'm like, well, are you in the union? And I was like, oh. He's like, no, I'm not I'm in like, the union. no, but I'm willing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, good, because yeah. I, I want somebody who's not going <laughs> to yeah, yeah. have any of those preset then. You know, and, I, and one other thing is somebody gave me the shot when I wasn't in the union yeah. to get their day, so I try and pass that along to, you know, yeah. as much as I can to help other people get their union, get a union, and get their day. And, and then, uh, you know, Josh started up uh, in the shop, and we, we were there for quite a few years. 15 years. There was just a story I was going to tell about that first. Oh, oh my, my first night? Well, no, well, my first <laughs> night, that was, that was a good one. That's one. So his first night. He's doing Horatio. We had to put a mustache on Horatio. Now, just prefaces, Horatio like bourbon. Yeah. Just going to leave that where that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, he puts a mustache on Horatio. It's a quick change. He puts the mustache on. He's all happy. He's in the right? And it's like, all of a sudden, we're watching, we're watching so the monitor. And <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> the mustache falls off. But the, so, the only thing that we had going for us was that the sketch was a rap sketch. Yeah. So we had a microphone. But the whole goddamn sketch then <laughs> turned into, <laughs> and he's putting the mustache and this back. Was also, <laughs> this was also before there was Matt Lee. So he said, "This was yeah. Spirit come back then." First night there. Yeah, first night. So, so Spirit so come was like the Spirit come was supposed to be Matt. Lee. No, but you said it like bourbon. No, yeah. he liked bourbon, so yeah. he was so, sweating. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like yeah. the alcohol's making it. So come now on. I go out to, I go out, to, I go out to the, I get called over to, to Tom Burke, who's the wardrobe designer, and I go talk to him. He said, "What the hell happened?" So I come back in the room and he's, you know, white. I'm he's, in a fetal position in the corner, so throwing so up. So Josh is very tan. He was very white at that moment. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what happened was I'm watching this happen, and I, and I guess just from, I don't know why it made sense because this story gets like I thought, hey, I'll, I'll run out there. <laughs> I, it never came to me, so I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna run the set, and I run the set, and here's the worst part of this: my first night there. Everything I'm doing is falling apart on screen. My new boss is most likely going to fire me. I'm about to throw up, and as I'm running the set, I literally elbow Tom Cruise in the face. As I'm <laughs> <looking forward. laughs> I barrel him into a fucking wall, and I go, I'm sorry, and I just kept going. <laughs> and I get out there and tell him what he did. Oh, <laughs> what happened? Is it Lord's pissed? He's flipping out. What the hell? He's just like, yeah. So I was, and I was freaking out. I was freaking out. He just slapped me on the back of the head and just said, welcome to live TV. And that's it. It happens. There's no, you know, we don't like it. Sometimes it makes a sketch funnier. But it just... It just it's the funny, funny thing is, do you know how many times I've turned on VH1 and went, oh, look, that sketch. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Get back up. You're the guy. You're the guy. You're the guy. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> You're being drafted. I quit. You're being drafted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the fun of the story. Yeah. And we have. Needless to say, though, I would like, before I walk away, to say, best 15 years of my life. <laughs> it was a fun one. So it was a fun, fun place yeah. to work. We all, that's the best thing about it, is we all, as, we all laugh and have fun there. Day oh, yeah, yeah, we get paid to have fun and laugh and build cool shit. Don't be mistaken by that saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, we work hard. If you don't have tenure or knowledge, if you come into that environment, you're going to fuck off.
So it's, it's, as I it's, say it's, that with affirmation in the book, though. <laughs> Make sure you know your shit if you ever get in that environment. Yeah. It's like we, we built stuff last week for last week's show. We were up for two days building arms that could snap and rip off. And, it's and literally the, like two and, days. And we had a rehearsal. <laughs> and, and, we, we get sleep. and we had a rehearsal live internal change till he comes out with normal arms and then they cut away and we've got to put on, Jason and I got to put on this strapped harness and set the arms into place for him to do this arm wrestling thing. And, you get, get to of, hang out with Rick Baker. Get out, of, get, <laughs> get out of the frame. And then between dress and hands, I'm like, yeah, you know, we're going to cut that. <laughs> so all that work, all that time, and all that yeah, you, you enjoyed making it. Though, yeah, right? yeah like, exactly. We got the build, and we had to play around cool with the yeah. some, uh, Mc had some rigs and some harnesses and some fun stuff. So it, it is. We, look at, we do get that fun stuff. Fucking Saturday Night Live, man. Yeah, and Saturday Night Night's our, and Saturday Night's our trip. Right? We get the laugh on it. It's, 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 what does not suck? With the schedule, okay, I'm trying to imagine building a dragon head for next week. Yeah. Uh, two. Two dragon heads, right? Yeah. For, for tomorrow. Uh, uh, but, like the next day. Yeah, uh, but, okay, the next <laughs> day. I'm sorry, yeah, I, mean, I was thinking in hours. two minutes. By the, Melissa next, McCarthy. by the next day, we had to have it on set by the next morning. What's the what's the longest you've had to stay up for this? For seventy two hours is a record. Seventy two hours is a record. Three days straight, taking little cat naps. And Without having a. You get to build overtime for that. Is yeah. something or collapsing? Mm -hmm. You get to build overtime for that. Oh, yeah, plenty of overtime. <laughs> Go with the nice golden time. Okay. I mean, the paycheck's nice. Yeah. The brain cells are nice too that you lose, but you know, it's and hazard like, pay at that point. Yeah, you know, like, but like I said, we yeah. don't go on at eleven thirty because it's ready. We go on at eleven thirty because it's, it's eleven thirty, and they know that they if they want that there by eleven thirty, we've got to put in the hours. We've got to have the manpower. We've got to spend three days straight building it and it's going to cost them x amount of dollars and they've been really nothing but they've been really good with with that because it's it's a live show they know like even the wigs they built those wigs in two days a normal wig takes a week, a week to build they'll be, ventilate a full head of hair in two days i was going to ask that i didn't know how you rush a thing like that i mean i've rushed other shit but I built wigs, and I can't imagine. They built, and now this last year they built, we opened up, a, there's a wig shop in the studio now, in 30 Teddy Rogers. Teddy Rogers. Yeah, Teddy Rogers runs the wig shop. Yeah. Yeah. And they build those wigs in two days. Sometimes they have them in less than two days, and they all build the wig. I remember watching yeah. her ventilate. No, my God, they're just oh, like, I, 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 you just watch them. Like, Every night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's kind of like you being like a, uh, what is that, like a knitting circle? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing how they pull that stuff out. But then again, it's you get into a mode of okay, I've got two days and I've got five minutes, and there it's so bad that now, like if I have too much time, I'll screw things up. There are times where like I'd be like, okay, you've got my I remember my first my first makeup show that I did a demonstration at. And I was like, okay, I was doing a, a devil makeup on. I think I did it on Josh. And they were like, oh, oh, yeah. That's the day you green that was Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> like, the makeup, oh, like, when I did the makeup live, I think it was like five, six minutes to do the makeup. It was a full devil with one. They're like, okay, you got, I was like, well, how much time do I have to do this? They're like, oh, you got like four hours. What the hell am I going to do in four hours? <laughs> like, I did this makeup in ten minutes. I was like, oh, I'm just fucking out to sit here. No, no, no. Like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, I was done. I was done an hour into it. I'm like, all right, I'll just talk. That's answer question, but, but I'll screw things up if I have too much time. I, I, I function better when I just work on autopilot. Like if I mm -hmm. overthink it, it's uh, like even Rick was saying, he's like, how do you, he's like, you, you just flip the cap and you do it and you're like, it, it, does, it seems like second nature. I'm like, I done. Did you pick Rob Devil last night? I was, yeah, I was starting Rick, to do it. I did too. It, did, I was like, Rick was, it was, Rick was watching a little more comfortable. Put the ball cap on because yeah. we were kind of schooling him. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, not yes. arrogantly, just kind of like this is outside. But it was, it's, it, it is a lot of like television. Ball caps, for especially. Just yeah. like, but that's one thing. If, sorry, but that's the one thing about doing the show like this is you don't really have time to overthink a lot of things. You just got to get the job done, get the job, and it's still HD. Yeah, remember that it's still HD. Yeah, 
thing. That was the biggest, the biggest culture shock was when we went from regular TV to sure. HD TV. And suddenly you can see everything. Yeah, like we did a test, we did a camera test the year before where they shot the episode with an HD camera next to a regular camera. And then in the summertime we went in and they're like, okay, well this is the regular camera, they hold up the bottle and you're like, oh, okay, that's great. Then they show the HD version, you're like, oh, I can read monosodium carbonated water. I was like, holy shit, I can read the bottle. <laughs> I'm like, how the hell am I going to get away with an edge on a bald cap or an edge on a prosthetic in a live change and paint it to look the way it needs to look? Was it really that big of a deal? We, I don't remember. We changed it. It went. Are the caps you do made for the show, or are they uh, are they stock caps? No, we get those from Alco. Okay, so this is this is a like a off the shelf. They are off the shelf cap. I thought maybe that it was no, something no, with a better a fit. So that well, we have silicone know. paste just for the front. Anything mm -hmm. from here up is a custom silicone made paste silicone. that we okay. custom make and run in the shop for sure. But the bald caps are just alcohol and vinyl caps. And everything else comes from us. Everything else comes from us. <laughs> There's <laughs> number even this week. I was like, Mark, I need body double. I'm sending Brandon in in the morning. Mark, I need this. Mark, I need that. I'm like, and and he. He's like, yeah, whatever you need, oh, we got it. Oh, you, yeah. you do a lot of the mold, the, like the silicone molding with body double, even if it's not like for skin. For life, it's yes, just I'm because it's so it. fast. Just well, it depends. I still like using GI one thousand on. I go back, I revert back to GI one thousand a lot. Um, I can get a, I can make a weak, I can make a, a full head, mold out of GI one thousand in under an hour mm -hmm. to get it cured and ready for a new mold. I scare them a lot because I'm like, the, 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 the how much fast can I put Platinum out of that, how does it work out? It works out fine. It's fine. You use a little. Uh, you got an exit. You exit. What's it called? Inhibition X. Yeah, it still works out fine. Brandon actually brings a lot of love knowledge. Yeah, whenever we whenever I got a question about materials, I'm like, Brandon, what am I going to do with this? Oh, you get the da 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 da. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you, Mark. with me. It saves a lot of time without having to bother Mark. Never forget where you come from. I spent five years working here, as some of you might recognize me. Mike, pick up a thing or two. Huh? Where, where did you work? I worked here. At what's your name? Fields at the Complete Sculpture. Thank you. <laughs> 90 Van Dyke Street. 90 Van Dyke Street. Sculpt.com. Nice. At least you remember. And then I started working for Lou. Afterwards, he'd call me when he needed an extra hand in the shop, and I'd work a full day here. I'd open the store. At, uh, I usually come in about 7:30 in the morning. Yeah. I'd leave around five, and I'd go work for him sometimes till two in the morning. Yeah, of course, because Lou takes all the good, the good lab people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I got a live cast on Tuesday. If anybody's really proficient, <laughs> they're, they're, they're body double. So then I'd sleep a few hours, come back here, and that would be like the week. Did somebody finally introduce you to Rick last night? Yeah, Lou did. <laughs> so that's pretty much, yeah, that's the, the fun field that's an elk code. Does anybody else got any other questions or anything? Since we're here? Nothing? Church, you should uh, start a magazine because you got a lot of cool questions. <laughs> you got you to gotta be like that. I, it's what's you. I want to. I want. You do a lot of cool stuff, and I want to know everything about it. <laughs> I'm hoping that, that we've. I've been filming everything for the past few years. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm starting to try and okay, talk the to them. Fish, the, blobfish. the blobfish was a big. That's actually online. You can actually watch that online. We did that blobfish on Kate McKinnon in like five minutes. Who's done the blobfish first? It was like four minutes to Actually, that was a really awesome application. That was, yeah. And, and we filmed it, and they actually posted it online. And it was actually kind of cool. But I'm hoping to release a lot more. I've got all the getting Melissa into all those makeups, and I've got all the footage of all that. But I've, I've, got, a, I've got to clear yeah, all that through the show and make sure they're good. But once I do, it'll be a great. It's a lot of fun stuff for people to see how we actually pull off the changes and the, the, oh, the stuff yeah. that we do. Even the sculpts, like I've got. The dragon sculpt, and we done. We did a time lapse of sculpting the dragon from start to finish, and painting it. Who did that with you? Uh, that was you and me and, me and Jason. The Jason. The two of us just sculpted that sucker real quick, and then the three of us just. Well, that was nice, man. Ginormous mold. And then figuring out how to get something to cast into it that would be 
Too. And it also had to be super light because it was supposed to go on top of a big piece of PVC that's going to be riding on the back. So it couldn't be too heavy. It had to be uber, really, really light and durable so it doesn't snap every time they drop it or bump into something. So that's what, some of the challenges is figuring out what we can do and what's going to work. And knock on wood, <laughs> we've been real lucky. So do you have any uh, crazy like uh, celebrity stories that are really kind of behind the scenes that you could tell me? <laughs> just Hold the box. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can get it. Some Hayek Oh, well, that's dumb. That's not SNL. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, Sam Hayek. Okay, can I tell it? Yeah, you can tell it. Okay. <laughs> Lou and I are sitting outside of a makeup trailer on Dogma. Oh, 1997. Seven. Seven or eight? Whatever. Um. Something happened to Salma. She got hit in the head or something? She, she was walking, got into her car to avoid like paparazzi and she smashed her head and so she was a little Had loopy. to go to the hospital. So they gave her some pain pills and she was a little loopy. So Louie and I are just bullshitting. Hanging outside, outside the trailer. I'm sitting on the steps. Louie's sitting next to me. Salma Hayek was walking out. After she gets out of the ambulance, she's like, <laughs> hey guys. And she comes up to me and she goes, you want to see my special effect? She goes, Tom, hold this. I don't know what the fuck she gave me a hold. Then Salma Hayek turns around with silly string. <laughs> Sprays it out of her ass onto our faces. And all we could do was go. <laughs> And she goes, that's my special effect. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. Salma Hayek, silly string ass. Yeah. Yeah. Pop that one, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming out after yeah, the season guys. finale. I mean, yeah, that, it was, that was awesome. Yeah, th that. thank you for making this the last thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one thing. I was like, oh, yeah, can you come out some? Thinking as late as you can because we got. I got home at six in the morning and and I think I some got like of nine a.m. Yeah, mm -hmm. the party. Tom didn't go up as it been. I'm still fucked up from last night. Come on, man. I have to do a job for. Okay, are we ready? Don't fucking tell anybody. Man. <laughs> well, well, meanwhile, there's four cameras going. <laughs> That's the radio. Who cares? I, I, I do the president show on Comedy Central which is uh, another Trump impersonation show. Uh, we both do Trumps. We do Trumps. We do doing Trumps. <laughs> and, and Alec, who Louis does, and I do Anthony Atamina for Comedy Central, uh, the president show. Uh, there was an article in Fashionista uh, online. Yeah. It was, Dude, it was so fucking cool because it's... About Lou and Jody Mancuso, hair and makeup, and, and then they talked about me and Betty Rogers. Betty Rogers. And it was just compliment, compliment, compliment on both sides. So there doesn't have to be animosity mm. in, in the industry. It's not like a yeah. Trump off? No, it's not a Trump off. Yeah. Well, maybe between the Trumps, but not <laughs> between the artists. Results like, oh, you use this color, I use this color, we use that color, we use that color. I just found out I'm going to be competition against my friend in the Well, that's that's one thing I've noticed about um, makeup artists. Like, you, I'm going to pull up, bring up face off for a minute. Oh, so that's you can forgive me. <laughs> but, no, I'll be but, uh, as much as we can sit here and dog reality shows, if you go to other shows that put artists against each other what say you talk about the tattoo shows they're talking smack about each other non-stop they're at each other's throat you go to face off it's all about helping each other because that's that's the way makeup is and i think we owe that to dick smith well that's dick because everything dick smith would hate face off <laughs> 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 i don't know if he would hate it but well, the helping I, I each other is a symptom of that. So, <laughs> you know. But he would he would see it as trying to promote. Every time I watch Face Off, I want to punch Jason in the dick. <laughs> <laughs>
sorry. My mom loves it. My mom, really. Um, I mean, yeah, that, and for the most part, what you see on that show is pretty true to, like, I still talk to a lot of people that are, uh, that I was on the show with. Um, and I know a few of them came back to New York, and I'm, now that I have off, I can go hang out with them because they just came back from L.A. Um, but everybody's pretty friendly for the most part. Nobody wants to but see like world, somebody else. That's the makeup world. Burn. That's the nature of the There's a lot things. of camaraderie. Like everybody, yeah. you know, everybody gets along. With I don't know who's gonna make it and get a job that can make me hire you. You don't want to shit on the guy that's better than you because you want to wait and work for the guy that's better than you. A lot more. You know what I mean? Like if I think it has to be with somebody, I'll call Tom or I'll call Josh or hey, but you know, I'm you know neck deep. Can you give me a hand? And we're like, yeah, fuck it, we'll go. You know. But you know, we one day we'll be working with each other, one day we've been in on the same project, but it's, we're all still t buddies and friends, and we still help each other out no matter what, you know? Absolutely. Louie, do you have any, uh, uh, any of you guys, do you have any Dick Smith stories at all? Have you? Yeah, I yeah, we got it. Well, I, I remember when I first started at NBC, I called Dick, and I said, Dick, I'm, uh, I'm running the, uh... Does everybody know who Dick Smith is, uh, first of all? It's not polite to talk about the dead, by the way. I'm just <laughs> making sure. I can, uh, <laughs> but Dick Smith was the. If you don't know who Dick Smith is, you don't belong in this room. <laughs> <laughs> so he he used to run the NBC makeup department. He created the NBC makeup uh, makeup lab, and uh, he's you know the Exorcist, all these amazing movies. And when I first took over and uh, you know working in the lab at NBC, I called Dick and I said, Dick, I'm you know I'm running the lab at NBC now. And, he was like, oh, you, it's such a, it's such a great place. You, you gotta go find the steam pipes. Like, yeah, what the hell are these steam pipes? Is it the puppets? Yeah. Oh, shit. Really? He's like, you gotta find Now I understand. He's like, you gotta find the steam pipes. He's like, what are steam pipes? Like, there's a panel, there's like a, a, like a metal panel that you open it up and there's steam pipes. And it was in a dressing room that the, pup, Muppet, the puppeteers used to hang out with because the Muppets used to be done on the 6B studio. So the puppeteers used to hang out in this room and drink and get drunk, and they painted all the steam pipes as Muppets characters. <laughs> so I was like, damn, i got to find where this uh, steam pipe is. And I'm like, I searched and searched, and I finally found that it was in the back of, at the time, it was uh, Max Weinberg's dressing room. So I like, when he was, when he was, <laughs> I had his assistant, I was like, you need to let me get in there, I need to see these, i got to see these pipes. So I found these pipes, and I mentioned it to Jimmy, and I mentioned it to a lot of people, and I think a lot of people knew that this did too. Now that Jimmy took over the, that studio, he's actually made, opened up that steam pipe. They've got a nice glass panel, and it's lit, and it's now part of the tour now that you can actually see these pipes that have been there since the original Muppets have been around, and it's really cool. But that was one of my things that, that Dick had told me about, is you got to find those steam pipes. And I, went, I went on my mad search through NBC to try to find the steam pipes, huh. because Dick told me I had to find <laughs> That's awesome. I think I got, I got kind of like two Smith stories. One was, uh, if you remember in the Makeup Artist magazine when it first started, he used to have, he used to do articles. Uh, and a lot of the articles were about health because he was very much uh, conscious because of what happened to his son, so he's very, very health conscious. And stuff. What was his son's uh, name? His, David? Yeah, he got to, uh, he had the reaction. And uh, so we always had articles about it. And I had this question about, you know how sometimes when people smoke a cigarette, it stays in their clothes and it stays in their breath. So I started talking about chemicals. And like, is there certain materials that will hold on to chemical, like, like you know, let's say, we used to talk about cold foams, the cryolone cold foam. Mm -hmm. And the joke, if you remember the cold foams, is they were very toxic, you know, the sign of accolades and all that kind of stuff, and we used to talk that's about joke. Uh, isocyanide. Isocyanide, that's right. Isocyanide. We used to talk about that people, if we have kids, they'd be flipper babies, so they don't have limbs. So I had, you know, it was really more about written correspondence. So my phone rings, I pick it up, and I go, hello, and he goes, hi, it's Craig Limberg here. I said, Craig Limberg, yes. Hi, it's Dick Smith. And I went, Kaka. Yeah. <laughs> My jaw dropped. Yeah, he's phone talking to me. Hmm? You got a phone call? I got a phone call from, from Dick Smith. Dick Smith. You lie. I swear to God. <laughs> you ain't never met nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so he's talking to me about stuff. Like this. So I'm just going, uh, 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 okay, okay. And then he goes off and I said, I'm really surprised that you called me. 
And he goes, why? He goes, because you're Dick Smith. And he goes, I know I really hate that bullshit hero worship. Is what he said. I said, and I was like, oh shit, I mean Dick Smith mad. <laughs> no, it, um, so, but he was like that. But he said that to you. He said, "I hate well, like bullshit Dick, hero worship." Back in which the, is, well, that's like rent. But when he would call you, like when Dick Smith called you, you'd be on the phone with him for like an hour. Like, yeah. like there were times I would call him and just ask him a question, and you're on the phone for like two hours. Like, all right, I, I got my answer question, but my question answered. But I'm not hanging up the phone until he's done. I'm, yeah. I'm going to sit there and listen. I wish I would have recorded half of those conversations. Cause I thank you guys for actually having the conversation the, with Dick Smith. I got to go to his house and pick up the last section of my course. It's great. You like just uh-huh. like dug me under the boat. So <laughs> I, get the, like, I got to hang out. I got to hang out with him for like a week in Japan. Wow. Yes. He used to teach at Yoyogi School. Mm-hmm. Yoyogi School was his Japanese school, and they would use his his, his courses as a correspondence course. So I had knew that he had gone to Japan. So I wrote him a letter. I said, "Well, I know you go to Japan." have any problems with me coming to Japan. And he goes, well, let me see. Because you know, he had retired by then, and you, <laughs> you kind of want to see Dick Smith do makeup. Uh, so you never told me this story. This is I'm sure I have. I'm sure. But, no, you have. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, he, he cleared it, went to Japan, hung out with him for like a week in the hotel. And went to the you know went to the school with him and hung out with him, uh, and it's funny if you ever see the the DVD for Taxi Driver, and they interviewed Dick Smith and he goes oh Robert Dinner or Bobby Dinner he was such a perfectionist. The word perfectionist means they were a pain in the ass <laughs> or something else because <coughs> I'm sitting here having dinner with him he goes ah, De Niro what a fucking pain in the ass he was to me. <laughs> Okay, and he's, he's cursing a blue streak. But he got right. the best work out of him, you know, right? Yeah, yes. because he would, he would go like this. He's like, what about this? And he's like looking in the mirror, De Niro going. And this is when he's wearing that cap when he's got the mohawk kind of thing. And that was hand laid, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's like, he's, he's like going like this. And he goes, what a fucking pain in the ass he was. Because he kept going like this and going like this. And uh, when he finally did the demonstration, he did like a exorcist makeup, and he did an old age makeup, and he cleaned off the actor. Mo was actually one of the teachers in the school, and he cleaned it all up, and he threw the pieces in the garbage. I walked <laughs> over, looked in the garbage, and said, "Can I have those?" <laughs> yeah, so I still have them. Oh, they, they six minutes. All right, if I am going to say that I'm going to give you one last question, you've already run longer than you should, and we really, really appreciate it. You want to give you a no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm here. You guys have been up late. You had a really late night. I'm sure you appreciate being able to step away for a while, but so why don't we give them a, 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 a round of applause. I got a story from from uh, John Caglione about third, Dick Smith. This third party is in. Yeah, sir. Yeah, third party. Never mind. All right. Well, thank you all for coming, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do or do not, there is no try. <laughs>